Naomi returned and Ruth, the Moabite or Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, returned with her from the fields of Moab. And they arrived in Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. It is one of the questions that accompanies us, that some, somewhere in the atmosphere throughout the whole book of the book scroll of Ruth, the question whether Ruth converted to Judaism. Today, if we hear the name Ruth, it's, a, it's, it's the name of a nice Jewish girl. And you at once would say it's Jewish, but it is actually not Jewish, it's Moabite. So the question is, did Ruth convert? And from a Jewish point of view, the question starts much earlier it actually, um, there's a question prior to marrying Machlon and Kilion, whether Orpah and Ruth converted to Judaism as it should be nowadays. Or was it a conversion when Ruth committed herself to Naomi and said, do not urge me to leave you and turn away from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay overnight, I will stay overnight. Your people is my people. Your God is my God. And then she extends this, committing herself even beyond death. Now from looking at, at the rabbinical tradition, we see that um, the rabbinic tradition deduces several laws of conversion from, from the scroll of Ruth. For example, when it comes to uh, the process of conversion that a, a potential convert has to be several times dissuaded. Um, to be persuaded to go another way and not convert, it's deduced from the book of Ruth. And it's even a halachic formality today. And, and there are other issues that are taken from this whole scenario and taken into today's religious practice. However, and what I'm saying now, I have it from Jewish sources, it's, it's not my idea, it's not a Christian idea, but biblical marriages to foreigners do not ever seem to involve conversion or require a change of their identity or even, we would say today, citizenship. That means they're belonging to another nation. Considering this, looking at Ruth's declaration that Naomi's nation shall be Ruth's nation, your, God, your nation is my nation, or your people is my people, uh, make it, it's much more greater, much more uh, powerful if, if there was never a need to convert. In a way, and that's what Jewish exegetes say, it's anachronistic to, to draw um, evidence for formal conversions from biblical texts. There were several instances in scripture that are recorded where foreign people, individuals, or whole people's groups joined the nation of Israel, may it be through marriage, may it be in a political alliance, 
when Joshua came to this land, it was the Gibeonites, for example, or whether it was just proximity that they lived together, or whether it was ideological affiliation. But these foreigners, if they joined the nation of Israel, just think of all the bodyguards of King David, they, they kept their foreign identity. People knew where they were from, and it wasn't a shame. So, it is much later, and today we have even a prohibition to remind a convert or a Baal Tshuva, somebody who returned to Judaism after, let's say, a Jew who, who led a wild lifestyle and then uh, says, now I want to be a religious Jew, to remind him what he was formerly, previously, is forbidden. If reminding a convert of his origins would be a crime according to biblical standards, the book of Ruth actually several times um, goes against that by reminding Ruth or reminding the reader that Ruth is the Moabites. Actually, Josephus himself never ever calls Ruth a Moabite. But the, the biblical text, the book of Ruth, constantly does it only after her conversion. And it is something actually we have up to, let's go into the New Testament, the, the Apostle Paul, after him saying that there is no difference, he still very clearly keeps the difference between man and woman, between Jew and non-Jew and also the difference between slave and master. It's very evident from his texts. So what do we do with that? We have to discuss it. And I think, yes, it is against the spirit of our times today, but I think we have to hold to it that our Creator loves diversity. He loves people to be different, and actually He created the differences in order for us to work together as a body, in some cases to become one body, in order to produce fruit. And if we deny this diversity, if we push it away from us, if we don't live it, we might bring ourselves into a state that we become infertile, that we become fruitless. So I like to very much encourage all of us to see that the Lord here not only sees the individual, but He created us diverse, He created us in, with different giftings, with different abilities, with different weaknesses also, so we complement each other. But in the end, He sees the whole of creation. And He has a heart, His heart goes out as John the Apostle writes, that so the Creator loved the world, not just individual human beings, that He gave His only Son. And if we see the whole of creation, if we see the whole of the universe, we might much better fit into it by complementing each other. And then a conversion is not even any more necessary. And I don't think that from a biblical text there's a need to convert, but it's much more important to discover, Lord, where do you want me to stand? What do you want me to be? And then to live according to His will.